The Share Pickers Podcast with Justin Waits. Years ago, when I was struggling to find a job I enjoyed, by the way, I had 25 different jobs by the time I was 25. I just, you know, a lot of those were when I went traveling for like a year, sort of melon picking, or like I said, working in nightclubs. But I went for a year just traveling, so I just wasn't happy in any job I found. But then I found a job, uh, I wanted to get to the city of London. I wanted to be a stockbroker originally. Uh, but I don't think I had the brain. Uh, I mean, try all oh, the qualifications, essentially. Um, but I had the brain, I think. <laughs> no, but I didn't have the qualifications. And so the, the closest I get was working in the city of London. Not in a, you know, in a broker's, but I worked in Marks and Spencer's in a sandwich shop. It's a very depressing job. I went to and from the city you know, on, a, on, a, on a tube there, um, serving all the guys, stockbrokers in the city. And I was on sort of, you know, average wage there. So I dropped out of, you know, school. I should have gone to university, really, if I wanted to do anything. Anyway, while I was there, what I used to do, I was inspired by the city of London. I've, and I've always, in, from the ages of 13, 14, I've always liked stocks and shares, you know. Um, I was in, I, inspired by my economics teacher, who one day did a stocks and shares competition, A-level economics. And I loved it. I really got the bug. Loved it. In fact, I was thinking of an idea doing that with um, schools because that's what inspired me. Anyway, I digress here. One of the first books I bought, and I, I did quite like reading books, and I, I, I used to listen, I didn't have any money, so I'm mumbling here, but I used to go back and forth by Shade House in Kensal Green. I used to buy a copy of the Financial Times because there wasn't internet pretty much back then. And I used to underline companies. I used to have piles of them. I used to take out the rest of the Financial Times. And I used to have piles and piles of Financial Times on my desk at home in my shared house where I underlined certain stocks. I couldn't afford to buy any. But for a long time, that's all I did was underline certain stocks. For like <laughs> years, I had a, a massive pile. I mean, if you look at the, sort of the price pages in the Financial Times, it's about, I think it was about four pages. But so I took the rest of the, you know, the, the newspaper away and put those on my desk, and they were like stacked high. Um, when I moved in the end, I had to you know, get rid of them. But I bought some books, investment books, when I used to go back and forth to Marks and Spencer's in the city of London. And one of the first books I bought, I really enjoyed and it sort of gave me a system uh, to look for stocks. And I've come up with a similar system based on an acronym. My acronym actually is better than his acronym, but you know, he's, he's a guy here who's a stat lover. His name is William O'Neill, and the book is How to Make Money in Stocks. And it says it provides a winning system for investing in the stock market. The book emphasizes growth investing, focusing on stocks with potential for price appreciation. O'Neill introduces the CanSlim strategy, that's the acronym, C-A-N-S-L-I-M, which combines a fundamental and technical analysis. Through research and analysis are crucial for identifying companies with strong earnings, growth, sales, and leading products or services. Market timing is emphasized using charts and technical indicators to identify optimal entry and exit points. I wouldn't mind reading this book again, actually. Um, also, risk management and the use of stop-loss orders are crucial to protect investments. Emphasis or emphasizes the importance of managing emotions, avoiding common pitfalls, and developing a disciplined mindset. Whereas practical advice and examples are provided based on O'Neill's experience and the successes and failures of notable investors. The book serves as a guide for investors aiming to develop a systematic approach to stock market investing and achieve long-term success in all market conditions. But the thing is, you can have a system, and I have a system, and it's a framework, and it really does help. But we are emotional beings. When it comes down to you can't just switch off emotion. You can be less emotional, but you can't switch off emotion. If you have no emotion, then you're basically a psychopath, you know, or sociopath in some way. Uh, but anyway, the CanSlim is an acronym that represents the key components of investment strategy outlined by William O'Neill in his book, How to Make Money in Stocks. Here's what each letter stands for. C, current earnings. Look for companies with strong and accelerating earnings growth. A, annual earnings growth. Seek companies that have shown consistent annual earnings growth 
over the past several years. N, new products, new management, new highs. Look for companies with innovative products or services, strong leadership and stocks that are hitting new highs. S, supply and demand. Analyze the volume of trading and price movements to assess the demand for a stock. L, leader or laggard. Focus on stocks that are leading their respective sectors or industries. I, Institutional sponsorship. Look for stocks that are favoured by institutional investors as their involvement can drive price movements. And M. Market direction. Consider the overall market trend and invest when the market is in an uptrend. And that's the Canslim system by William O'Neill. And it's, what is the book is called? How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. And it's worth reading. Like I said, I've got fond memories of this. I may even try reading it again. Uh, but here's a quote from the book. Successful traders and investors usually know what to do and have the discipline to do it. They don't let their emotions get in the way. That's William O'Neill. Worth checking out that book there. The Share Pickers Podcast with Justin Waits.